Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is the last installment of the 30 minute webinars where we feature different personas. Today we're covering eighth grade. The personas that we're using today were constructed um, based on a survey that we sent to Idaho college and career professionals about the questions that they received most frequently um, from students in each grade level. So thank you to everyone who helped make that possible. No student persona that you're about to see is based on a real life student. So any similarities are entirely inadvertent. The format today um, will be, we'll introduce a student, we'll share some of the questions that they ask or the scenarios that they're in, we'll bring up the Next Steps Idaho website and walk through the resources that would best serve them, and then we'll come back to the PowerPoint for a couple of critical takeaways. When that takeaway slide comes up, we invite you guys to put into the chat anything that we missed or that you use frequently to answer these questions when you field them. So with that, we're gonna move right along. Oh, well, hang on, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Joan, I'm the Next Steps Idaho Outreach Coordinator. I'm joined by Sarah Scudder, who's the Career Information as well as the Next Steps Idaho Outreach Team Manager. And then Byron Yankee, who's the College and Career Advising Manager. So with that, we're gonna hand it over to Sarah and Quincy. Great. So many of you have probably experienced Quincy. Um, he's an eighth grader. He's growing up, um, but he's not grown up yet. And so Quincy needs help because he just doesn't know what he wants to be when he grows up and he's asking for help in figuring it out. He's heard about this thing called Future Finder or Plan Smart. Um, so anyway, um, we're going to have Quincy start off by answering his questions about Future Finder. So on the Next Steps website, I direct Quincy to the mega menu and under Quick Links, uh, Future Finder. And this is a great um, self-assessment to get Quincy started um, because it's going to ask him some things about his strengths, what he's into, and quickly he'll get to also provide information on what he enjoys doing. And at the end, it's gonna provide Quincy um, <clears throat> with some information on careers that might be a good match based on what he likes to do now as an eighth grader um, and what he thinks his strengths are as an eighth grader. We're almost there. Quincy's almost done taking his assessment. And the reason this is a good assessment to start with is because it's covering three different bases. And so when he gets to his results page, he can download it as a PDF, um, but he can also research um, some careers. So he can find out about careers that match both his interests and his strengths. Um, and if he clicks on one of the cards, it's gonna take him to more information. He's gonna see what the demand and earning power is in Idaho, where he might be able to go to uh, study uh, to get a degree that would lead him to be able to be employed in that career. He can compare it um, to another occupation side by side to look at wages. Um, and he can also scroll up and he can look more at the career cluster if he'd like. Um, thank you. So he can look at architecture and construction. And then he can also, if he clicks on that education tab, he can see some classes that he might take throughout high school that would help him um, prepare to be an architect. So the next question that Quincy had was something about Plan Smart. He'd heard about it, he wasn't sure what it was. So going back up to the mega menu, under the quick links, Plan Smart. For those of you that had been working with us in CIS, this is what we call Plan Smart, but this is what you would have seen as reality check. Quincy gets to start by saying where he wants to live in Idaho, and he's going to pick Idaho Falls. And then he's gonna answer a question. And this is just to get him started. So does he think he's gonna be a minimalist? He's gonna have average spending or maximum spending? No real need to worry too much about this. It's just gonna give him a starting place from which to make some more selections. So when he clicks right on, he's gonna see these different options as he scroll down. And this is where Quincy is going to pick his lifestyle. So it's a great conversation starter to talk about, you know, owning or renting, Household size, is Quincy planning to be married at some point in his life? Does he want to have kids? What does that look like? 
Um, health insurance, maybe Quincy doesn't understand the need for health insurance. So those question marks up by the titles of each of the sections is gonna give him some background on healthcare about why it might be important to consider um, putting that into his monthly budget. Uh, scrolling down, he'll get to pick different utilities. Another great conversation starter for students who don't realize that there are more um, bills sometimes than just uh, your monthly house or payment or your rental fees. Um, he can look at his different options around transportation. Um, if he's thought in more detail about where, how much he thinks he might wanna go to school, he can start picking information back based on his loans. He can um, talk about um, personal care. So maybe he's not sure exactly what personal care is. If he clicks on that, that would be, maybe he likes to uh, go to the gym. So he needs to account for a gym membership, miscellaneous, and then how much he might want to save. And once he's made all these selections, he can now go up and see um, how his lifestyle has changed from that minimalist style. I don't hit refresh, Joan. Joan might have found a, oh, there we go. So Quincy needs $55,000 um, to meet the lifestyle based on the selections he's chosen. He can use the graph to understand what percentage of his income is gonna be going to each of those areas. And if he clicks on matched careers, he's gonna be able to see those careers in Idaho that are going to align with his lifestyle that he's chosen. Um, he can look at career clusters. So if he's taken the career cluster survey, he can filter that down so that he can see exactly, um, maybe he was in hospitality and tourism. That'll give him another option. So right now he looks like he's limited by his results from Future Finder and if he was the other, but he can make all these different choices. Um, and he can also look at education and training. And when he clicks on any of these, such as accountant, he's gonna get that more detailed information about the wages and where he might be able to go to school in Idaho uh, for that education and training. Another great place to send Quincy is up into the mega menu again. We're gonna have him go for underneath for high school students and go to the eighth grade page. Here's where Quincy can start to have that conversation. It's different activities such as focusing on him or doing something new. And by clicking on it, he can get different steps that he can take. So making a plan for high school and he could click on the eighth grade plan in there and go and complete some act additional activities around eighth grade. The main takeaway for Quincy as an eighth grader who's growing up but not grown up is that this is really a time to be aware of how close adulthood is. And so exposing him to real careers, career clusters and budgeting, um, and just knowing that these are, he's gonna be making choices for his future, but that the choices he's making now will grow and change as he grows and change over, over the next few years of his life. And so Future Finder is a great way to get him started to thinking about professions and industries, Plan Smart is a great way to start thinking about a lifestyle and how that lifestyle can come connect to careers. Um, but whatever it is, just make sure that no matter what his interests and skills are, he knows common career college and career vocabulary and that it's okay for him uh, to change the ideas that he has as he learns more about himself throughout high school. And with that, I will turn it over uh, to Ron. Hi, Ron is a planner. Ron's the young man, you can tell by uh, his silhouette there. He's got his phone, he's already starting to plan for college and career. He's somewhat excited and overwhelmed. Do I really get to pick some classes for next year? What about electives? What kind of classes can I take in high school? What classes do I have to take in high school if I think I wanna to go to college? And so Ron, uh, deserves our structure to help him plan forward. So I would take Ron into uh, the uh, career readiness for our students, the information that's there, click on eighth grade. And the first thing I would uh, have Ron uh, click on is the electives that interest with the electives. This is a way for him to um, think about making real world 
connections with it. It's something that can be done more than once with it and saved. It's important for Ron to know that his uh, career choices may be changing over a period of time. It's really important for him to think forward as he goes uh, to look at that. Uh, he can also uh, start the activity tracker, which is really important uh, because this is something that can go from year to year. He can record the types of things he's done, you know, job shadows, field trips. He can record a little summary of it. What did he learn with it? And he can continue to add all of these throughout his career. Joan, if you'll go down to save, we'll tell people how they can go ahead and save this information uh, for now, <clears throat> for the rest of this year. Uh, they can copy a URL and, and save that. They can uh, email a URL to uh, their counselor or to a personal folder. They can bookmark it if they uh, have a one-on-one -on -one device or they can download a PDF, uh, just a little teaser. What we're hoping to do is that we are able uh, to have a single sign-on for a student accounts uh, that will roll out next uh, fall that will allow uh, students to, to save that information uh, more easily. But for now, we do have several ways that uh, students can uh, begin to think about how to save. I, I think it's also important to do the career uh, cluster interest survey. First of all, down below, there's a brief information about the career clusters that are a way for us to look at careers that have similar skills and similar interests. And so Ron can take this career. So this is the, an activity uh, that uh, Ron can make it for himself as valuable as he would like. And so there are three, what are your favorite subjects? There's a lot of information here. Remember many of our, our uh, inventories are, and quizzes are set for students and also for adults. As he makes choices in the very bottom, you'll notice the different career clusters that keep on coming up uh, with it. They change as he moves forward. He can select as many or as few as he would like. And then at the end, it gives him a, a rating for the career cluster that uh, matches his responses. Again, this is something that can be saved. This is important because next I would take uh, Ron to the browse careers. I go to the Mega menu and clear on the left is browse careers. And down at the very bottom, uh, the career cluster that was identified, you can use as one of the filters available. You can also filter by demand and by highest salaries. And he can also filter by the length of time for that uh, training or certification with it. You know, Sarah, I showed you that by clicking on some of the, the uh, careers, there's more information available <clears throat> about uh, wages and, and education. And there's a way to compare different types of careers as Ron is beginning to think forward uh, at that point. I uh, went also to the mega menu and go to the, um, we've got to explore careers with that. And I would go to the mega menu and look at the two and four year college under education and training. There's a really good uh, explanation of kind of the differences. Ron's a planner, so he'd be great to kind of do this independently to kind of read through, you know, some of the differences with that. He probably has some questions he might be writing down uh, for a discussion with a counselor or for his mom and dad. And Ron's going to scroll down just a little tiny bit. And he's uh, able to look at auto colleges and universities by selecting colleges and universities. It gives him the opportunity to see some short videos uh, about the uh, uh, college. And here we have North uh, NIC. It is a 3D campus tour uh, that is available in English and Spanish as a way for him. And those are, are written from a student's perspective. And on the quick links, there's an explore degrees and programs. 
at NIC. You can explore the programs by this tool, by listing the type of time, the programs, uh, division, and to look at some of the types of results that are available. So uh, looking at various colleges and universities can be really important uh, for Ron uh, to look at. Um, as uh, Ron is also uh, looking on that page, he can find out about some basic information, explanation about scholarships, what's worth study uh, with it, some information about student loans, and all of those uh, are things that can be important as Ron begins to plan forward. There is also uh, a link on the very bottom of the resource uh, center for first generation and college students. That's some really helpful information if uh, Ron you know, fits that type of description. Some ideas, some activities, and a link to the TRIO programs across the state. Ron has heard a little bit about advanced opportunities. And so Ron can go to the search feature or the resource library and type in advanced opportunities. Uh, this is a way for Ron and his parents to find out some more information. It's an explanation of what the different programs are. Would point out uh, there's a great video and some important FAQs. Uh, considering advanced opportunities is really important for Ron as he thinks forward, but it's something that, that he needs to be guided through with the help of a counselor, advisor, or teacher, and moms and dads. The brochures and information are PDFs and can be uh, uh, downloaded uh, and reviewed at uh, all the times with it. Just know uh, that Ron has lots of choices uh, in front of him as he begins to think forward. Uh, the takeaways for Ron is it's important to balance his interests and hopes with kind of planning and good habit building. We'd like to have Ron connect with real world experiences. It could be a job shadow, a part-time job, a volunteer, something that let him explore his interests and opportunities and a way for him to think uh, forward as he makes his eighth grade plan. Doing the career cluster survey would be really helpful because that allows Ron to be thinking about careers in a broad way. Uh, and as he has many, as he has four years in front of him, he can also be aware of the advanced opportunities, dual credit courses, but most importantly, he will be able to look at the high school graduation requirements that are on the Next Steps website. All those planning tools are really important for Ron. And with that, uh, Ron is gonna give way to Sophia. Sophia is a little bit caught unaware. She's an eighth grader and she's really excited about transitioning to high school, but she hasn't thought a ton about college and career yet. So her question is basically, why are you bothering me with this right now? And where we would start with a student like Sophia on the Next Steps Idaho website, going back to the homepage here, out of the mega menu and closing out some of these windows, we would probably help her get her bearings by suggesting she go to the mega menu in the top right corner. And then underneath four high school students, this is that eighth grade landing page. So there's some helpful checklists in both English and Spanish, but they're summed up pretty well right here. So we would have her open up, maybe focus on you. And we would talk to her about the importance of talking to her own counselor and thinking about her future. Again, there's PDFs in English and Spanish that summarize some of these points that are really helpful to take home and talk about with her family. But for instance, asking her, like, what do you see in your future? What's most important to you? Do you want to be an adventurer? Do you want to travel? Do you want to make some incredible discovery in science or medicine? Just asking eighth graders what their dreams are right now can be really helpful and informative down the line. So going back to that eighth grade landing page, closing focus on you and opening do something new, we're also gonna encourage her to explore the seven CTE organizations, either investigating whether the high school that she will be attending offers one of these programs, or if they're available locally through some other organization. But encouraging her to get involved early, particularly with one of these organizations is gonna help her a ton 
throughout her high school career. So just opening that dialogue and having that conversation. There's also a link to volunteer opportunities underneath this do something new. And then the last thing on these drop downs that we're going to focus on for Sophia right now is understanding her options. There's apprenticeships, of course, and Next Steps Idaho has a whole page about this. We also have a page about work based learning. If you go to the mega menu icon and then underneath education and training, you can access that right here. But just on this education or this apprenticeships page, you have apprenticeship FAQs from the Department of Labor as well as their apprenticeship search. So these are two really handy links, as well as if you keep scrolling down. For an eighth grader, it's really engaging to be able to watch some videos and that's what's offered right here. So definitely something to put on Sophia's radar. There's also, Byron showed this to us moments ago, the Idaho Colleges directory, including those fun videos as well as the um, 360 degree tours. So a lot of fun stuff for eighth graders to explore there, as well as the Next Steps Idaho military resource page. It's a fun infographic for students to explore like what their interests might be if they are intrigued by the idea of enlisting. And there's a link to today's military if they want more details about any of those branches. Following along this theme of understanding your options, we're going to send Sophia down a little bit further to the eighth grade learning plan, which is again where Byron brought us earlier. But we're going to direct her attention to the learning style survey activity. So we're going to take this activity, but just know that as soon as she completes it, she could come back here and put her answers in and then have a little reflection about it. And it's best, like most quizzes on this site, if she completes this periodically and then she can just check in with herself and see, well, as a freshman or as an eighth grader, I really like doing stuff with others. But as I've grown and now as like a sophomore or a junior in high school, like actually like doing things on my own a lot more. And so just tracking those changes can be a helpful way to stay involved in her own learning experience. But right now we're gonna open up this learning in styles inventory and I'm not gonna take you through all of it, but you can get the general idea. There's three sections um, and they just ask questions that help students identify the best way or the way that they're most attracted to learning. So I'm gonna actually pull up a completed learning styles inventory results page. And if you scroll down, there's three sections. There's general learning styles, math learning styles, and social learning styles. The students are probably not going to do this by themselves. They're at least not going to go through this results page and get everything out of it that they could unless they're there with a counselor like yourselves or a trusted adult or a, um, or a teacher. But assuming that they're with that adult and they're having that conversation and they're starting that dialogue about how that student likes to learn, some really helpful things to do is to roll over whatever the predominant style is, for instance, maybe learn by doing, and then scrolling down and looking at the things that they can do. For instance, create role plays, charades, skits, and games. Or if they like to learn by reading, then perhaps they take notes or lists and then they rewrite their notes. And just having that exposure to words could be really helpful. For math, you either learn by talking through it or you learn by seeing problems. For seeing problems, perhaps they want to draw diagrams or sketches when they're setting up problems. Or if they like talking it through, maybe they would be, it'd be really helpful for them to have to explain different math problems to someone else. And like in, in so teaching, they learn more about it than they would have otherwise. And lastly, the learning, um, the social learning style is whether or not they like to learn by themselves or with others. And again, they have those helpful suggestions. So study in a group that meets regularly, or if you like learning by yourself, um, just be confident in yourself and in your preference to work alone, which is can be huge um, for eighth graders who are really setting that expectation of how they want to study. Speaking of which, we're gonna go up to the top of the Next Steps Idaho page and hit search. And then we're gonna type in how to study and you have this great resource page with links to this fun infographic that again capitalizes on those learning style results but you could view the full infographic there there's also a nice ted talk um, and then of course the inventory that we just took it's also nice to point out to students like Sophia, like building those good habits, for instance, talking about how they take notes, the Cornell note-taking system, where you take all your notes on the right side of the page, and then after the lecture, after the class, you come back and fill in um, different cues or questions related to the bulk of the content in the right side. And then 
periodically update your notes with a summary of what you've learned on the bottom of the page. So just talking through how she can be more engaged in her class can be really helpful. We're also going to talk to Sophia about taking the family tree, the career family tree survey. We're going to direct her to go to the Mega Menu icon and underneath quick links, we're going to send her to the career family tree. I'm not going to fill these out. Again, it takes a, a good amount of time, but you can see that you enter their name, you choose their relationship, for instance, grandfather, what their occupation was, and then their education level. So the student will click done as soon as they've finished inputting all of that information. They're going to add it for up to four different um, grandparents on both sides, I think, and then up to two different parents and guardians on both sides. And then after they've completed that, they're going to move on to siblings and cousins, the exact same drill. And here they're going to input what their dream job might be. So as an eighth grader, what do they think they want to do? And the final step is actually one of the most useful um, and one that can be revisited over and over again. They're going to ask themselves these three questions. Are there areas that several of your relatives have pursued? How many of your family members' career choices changed over time? What do your relatives tell you about the reasons to choose or not choose careers like theirs? As soon as students have input all of that information, they can download a PDF and get a picture of everything that they entered and save this to refer back to. Again, it allows for a really strong dialogue and a really personal sort of guided conversation about the careers that their family went through and what they might be interested in. So just looking at the time, we are running long. So we're gonna go back to the takeaways for Sophia um, and just really encourage her to talk to family members and just know that they can take the quizzes on Next Steps Idaho over and over again if they want to. The Acro Spring Higher Ed Tour is happening right now. There are evening sessions. I think there's one more tomorrow night on Thursday at seven and 7.30 Mountain Standard Time. So six, 6.30 Pacific Standard Time. Um, for parents to check out some of these events as well. The Counselor Ambassadors on the Next Steps Idaho website have launched. We encourage you guys to check that out and make contact with the ambassador of your region. The Governor's Cup Scholarship has been extended to March 1. Um, and then there's a user testing volunteer opportunity. We'll post that link in the chat if you guys are interested in giving us some feedback on the Next Steps Idaho website as it pertains to how educators use it. And then finally, there's advanced opportunities training coming up on March 10th, and there'll be more details about that on the Next Steps Idaho calendar. Thank you so much for joining yes. us. Uh, as always, if you have questions, drop it in the chat. Otherwise, again, thanks. Thanks for everything you do for our Idaho students.